the first 18 years of my life, my mother would pack the suitcase for our annual trip, our annual holiday to Blackpool to stay at the Clarendon Guest House. In this bag went many things. The essentials for any holiday. First of all was my t-shirts. There's my jeans. <laughs> <laughs> no case, I've grown. <laughs> and of course, the bear essential was my bear. <laughs> Before Mr. <laughs> Bean. <laughs> but what's in this suitcase was also dreams. And the dreams remain packed in that suitcase. They never got out. My question first is, how many of you have been to Blackpool? Hands up! One, two, three, four. Okay, for the rest of you, you are missing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Some would say Blackpool is like the Hawaii of England. Well, that would be a lie. <laughs> Some would say it's, it's where the action is, but it isn't. We went there every summer for 18 years. Mm. We stayed at the Clarendon Guest House, and that was in Blackpool Centre. Blackpool had a few things. It had three piers, it had a big tower, and it was known for having the World Championship ballroom dancing there every year. And we would go there during the summer, and sometimes we'd see this big orange thing in the sky, which we knew was an UFO, because it couldn't be in the sun, because we don't get the sun in England. <laughs> we went there year after year after year. But my mum and I would sit on the beach, and we'd think about going somewhere else. <laughs> going somewhere where it was a beautiful place. Going somewhere where there was a sun. Going somewhere which was different. Going somewhere which was not Blackpool. <laughs> <laughs> but every year we drove the 50 miles from our house to Blackpool. Year after year after year. And stayed at the Clarendon Guest House. Now the guest house was a bed and breakfast. And what you got was a bed and breakfast <laughs> and nothing much in between. <laughs> All the breakfast, all the breakfast, I loved it. It had, it was an English breakfast, so it had eggs and bacon and sausages and mushrooms and toast and tea and homemade dough. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but after breakfast, there's nothing else. About <laughs> that was a black hole. <laughs> we still have those dreams as going somewhere else and, well, it wasn't until I was 18 that I managed to get away. Because I came from a poor family, and we dreamed of this, but my dad was laugh at us. My dad would say, you know, we never gonna afford to fly. Don't waste your time, your resources of dreaming of going somewhere else. But I did dream, and I was determined to go and make that dream true, not just for me, but to make it true for my mum. When I was 18, I actually made it. I made it on a plane, I went to Spain. But for my mum, it took a bit longer for her. She was 60. And when she was 60, I was able to afford to bring my mum and dad to Hong Kong. And she came with the suitcase. <laughs> and in it, she packed some presents. She packed some jeans for me. <laughs> okay, I've grown. <laughs> but more importantly, in packing the dreams, she had packed and realized that now she was in a different place, a place of the sun, a place that was beautiful, a place which was not Blackpool. <laughs> it was Hong Kong, and her first flight was so exciting. Her first flight in a plane, she came on cafe. She loved it. She said, the food was fantastic. The service was wonderful. There was great reclining and chairs. And then I realized she'd been <coughs> upgraded to business class. <laughs> <laughs> she was living my dream. <laughs> My mum was happier then, and she still is happy. Uh, I saw her recently, she's now in a nursing home back in England. She can't travel too much, 
but she's travelled and she's travelling still in her mind and she remembers those dreams. She remembers being in Hong Kong and she also went to New Zealand. She went to Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Hong Kong. Many times to Hong Kong, many times to New Zealand. She had lived her dream. And I was happy I was able to help her achieve her dream. I think to me that was what, what helped. And I think we have to think how often do we help people achieve their own dream. I'm an auctioneer now, so part of my job, when I'm doing my Pai Mai, is <laughs> I'm helping people, well, they pay their highest prices to get their dream item. <laughs> <laughs> but I also get the most rewarding time is when I'm an auctioneer and I do, for free, no charge, I help certain charities, like the Rotary Club, like children with speaking problems, and also for the children's diabetic. And I help them, through my auctions, I raise money, which raises their dreams. Very often they're not in a position to be able to unpack their own dreams. I got joy from helping my mother as well, just by getting her to Hong Kong. I paid some money, she was here. But we can all help people achieve their dreams. And sometimes it doesn't have to cost us a lot of money. It can be as simple as volunteering to help read to a child, to read a book. Or it could be as simple as listening to a new Toastmaster make a speech and encouraging them to achieve their dream of speaking. Or even as simple as listening to someone else's dream. And I find I get the most joy out of just helping people to achieve their dreams. So my question to you is, are you helping people unpack their dreams? I think, after a little bit, I'm still searching. I still have my dreams. My dreams now, well, they're still with me in this case. I had some dreams in this case, but more importantly, my dreams now are here and here. I share them with you so you can share your own dreams and we can help people achieve them all. Sweet dreams to you all.